Welcome back to CSUN's Organic Chemistry Series. My name is Alex Matanona. Today we're going to go over Chem 334's uh, Grignard reaction. So the Grignard reaction is a reaction where we do a carbon-carbon bonding. So this is very important for a lot of organic syntheses. Now the typical product from a Grignard reaction is going to be some sort of alcohol, either primary, secondary, tertiary, uh, or even possibly carboxylic acid if we're doing the reaction with carbon uh, dioxide. Now, the thing that we have to be careful in this experiment is to make sure we don't let any water uh, touch our experiment because if we have water enter our experiment when we don't want to, uh, we're going to lose product uh, due to side reactions. So uh, before we start today's experiment, the previous lab, you should have ground up some magnesium bits put them into your round bottom flask and the instructor probably threw it in an oven for you to bake out all the water that you'll need. Uh, once that is ready, we'll go ahead and go over and take a look at the equipment that we're going to need. Alright, so this is what we're going to need today. Uh, the first thing is uh, your round bottom flask. Now in your round bottom flask, you should actually have uh, some magnesium fillings that you had freshly ground up last week, as well as your uh, Teflon coated stir bar. So this is this little piece right here. Now this should be inside your round bottom flask. You should have given it to your instructor last week and they would have put it into an oven and then a desiccator to make sure that any water that is microscopically adsorbed onto the surface gets completely baked off. So there's absolutely no water on the surface of your round bottom flask. So you'll get your round bottom flask as well as your water cooled condenser and you'll attach them using an extension clamp. So this is our extension clamp. So the first thing that we're going to do is set up the extension clamp and make sure that we have it at the height that we want. So we'll set up that extension clamp. We'll put the round bottom flask into the sand bath with no heat. And then we'll take our water cold condenser and put it over the top. There's just a little bit of sand, so I'm going to wipe it off. And we'll go ahead and tighten that up and make sure that there's no uh, possible way that they break apart. So now our extension clamp is set up. The next piece that we're going to have is our drying tube. So the drying tube, we'll go ahead and take a small piece of cotton, ball it up, and we'll go ahead and stick it in there using uh, a spatula or a pasture pipette, as long as you're careful. Uh, once that cotton is in there, you can go ahead and get some calcium chloride. And you'll get your scupula. Just go ahead and scoop some of it out. You should have done this before in the deals all the reaction. And we'll go ahead and fill our drying tube with the calcium chloride. Now, if you spill some, just make sure you clean it up um, once you're done. And then we'll make sure we recap the calcium chloride tube because it will uh, go bad by soaking up water if exposed to the atmosphere. And then you'll go ahead and take another piece of cotton and use it to sort of plug the calcium chloride and make sure it doesn't fall out. If you need a little bit more cotton, you can go ahead and use it. But don't have it so tight that no air can go in. So now we have our little calcium chloride drying tube. We're going to stick that at the top and then we're going to use a Keck clip or your plastic clip just to attach and make sure that they don't fall off. So our reaction mixture is more or less uh, set up. The next thing that we'll need to do is we will take some latex tubing, you can find these in your common drawers, and you're going to attach them to a water line. So the first one is you attach it to the water line. Here it's in the back. It's almost always a green nozzle. And we'll stick this tubing onto our water cold condenser. And we always want the water input, so coming from the green nozzle, to go onto the bottom. Then we'll take another piece of latex tubing, stick it on top, 
and then we'll go ahead and stick the other end in the little drainage sink that you have in the back of your hood. From there, you can go ahead and turn the cold water on on the side of your hood. Gently turn it on and you'll notice the water is now flowing freely through here and you can actually hear it draining in the back. Now you don't want, need a very fast flow, you can just have a very light, moderate flow. Remember we're in a drought, you want to conserve. So we'll go ahead and drain it in the back. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it off for now, just for the next part of our experiment. Once you have all that set up, you're going to go ahead and take your uh, regents, probably your diethyl ether and your bromobutane that's uh, dissolved in diethyl ether, and you'll go ahead and use a pasture pipette and you can just pop the top off, you can take the water cooled condenser off, and you can just add a few drops, or however much you need, in through the top, and then quickly reattach. And you do this however much you need to add your regents into the round bottom flask. From there, you turn on your stir bar, and then you just let it stir. And if your reaction goes well, the mixture should turn cloudy and most likely have a grayish tint to it. If it doesn't, after five minutes, call your instructor over and they will go ahead and add some iodine into it and that should kickstart the reaction. Okay, so now that we're, our reaction is done, what we're gonna need to do is take off the calcium chloride drying tube and we're gonna take some acetone and use it to quench our reaction. But, but before we do that, we're actually gonna loosen up this extension clamp. We're gonna use the Keck clip that we had at the top to hold them together. And we're gonna transfer this whole reaction into an ice bath. And of course, we're gonna be careful to try not to spill any water from our condenser. So we'll go ahead and close this up, make sure it's clamped sitting in our ice bath. It's cooling down. And now we'll use that acetone to go ahead and quench the reaction. So um, it has a specific amount that you're going to be using. You can measure that out uh, with your graduated cylinder. And you'll just go ahead and add it straight in through the top. So you'll go ahead and just drop it right in. And you want to do it drop wise. You don't want to do it too fast. So notice it's only a few drops at a time here. So drop wise. Now, once you've added that in, you'll go ahead and let that cool down a little bit. And then you're going to take some hydrochloric acid and you're going to add it into your reaction mixture as well. And the hydrochloric acid is going to pretty much eat your magnesium. So you'll take your acid and again, adding it drop wise, you're going to add it in straight through the top and the HCl should uh, make some hissing with that uh, magnesium as hydrogen gas is created. So once that is all complete, you can go ahead and remove your water cooled condenser. So I'm going to be careful here and take off this Keck clip. I'm going to go ahead and remove the top part and just lay it down for now. And I'm just going to clamp up my reaction mixture and I'll uh, go ahead and get rid of the water by simply draining it out the back. So I can go ahead and just hold that up and the water should just drain straight out. You might have to bring it back and take off the tubing, but we'll do that at another time. Now, once our reaction mixture has been quenched with the acetone and the hydrochloric acid, we now need to separate out our product that we want. So the way that we're gonna do that is to use a separatory funnel. Now, the separatory funnel is right here, and what we want to do is set up a clamp, just like we've used before, and make sure that our separatory funnel is held nice and tight by that clamp. Then, we can go ahead and take our reaction mixture and we could pour it into our separatory funnel. Now, when you pour it into your separatory funnel, typically you are going to want to use a short stem funnel. And 
using the short stem funnel, it's this little glass funnel. We'll go ahead and pour it in through the top. And then we'll go ahead and take a little bit more diethyl ether. And we'll go ahead and set the funnel down for now. And then just rinse the inside of your flask once more. Give it a little whirl and then you'll pour that in through the top as well. All right. And that's to get any residue that's kind of hanging back. And you might want to do that once or twice. Um, just use uh, about a mil each time. So once we've added in our reaction mixture, including the washes, we'll go ahead and put our cap onto the separatory funnel. And we are gonna hold that cap nice and tight Hold, holding that cap nice and tight, we're gonna give this a few shakes, and then we're gonna hold it up just like this so the nozzle's pointing up, and we're gonna release the pressure. And oftentimes you're gonna hear some gas uh, come out from there. Then you'll close it again, and when the separatory funnel handle is horizontal, it's closed. When it's vertical, it's open. So make sure it's closed. Give it another shake once or twice, open it and then you should hear a little outflow of gas once again. We'll close it one more time, flip it over, and then we'll put it back in our, our clamp and then we'll release the top. So we'll take the cap off. From there, you're gonna have your reaction flask and you're gonna wanna separate out your organic phase from your aqueous phase. So the way you can do that is simply drain out your aqueous phase and once you only have organic phase, you can take another reaction or another Erlenmeyer flask and simply collect it. And then you, you'll do that just by you know, releasing it and collecting it, but of course in a separate Erlenmeyer flask, you don't want to mix the two together. Once you have it fully collected, you're gonna to want to dry it. So when we say dry it, we mean remove all remaining water. So you're gonna take a little bit of potassium carbonate and you're gonna add it into your solution until your solution turns clear. So we'll go ahead and add it. And then you, you may have to add you know, a decent amount, a few scoopfuls. Some of you may only have to add you know, half a scoop. So just add it until the solution turns clear and you don't really see any more uh, water or murkiness uh, in your solution. All right, and that would be a good stopping point for this experiment. Uh, 334 experiment three part four for the ending. Okay, so now you have your solution sitting over a drying uh, agent. Uh, what you wanna do is just go ahead and cap it with a rubber stopper and store it in your drawer for next week and then we will conclude next week. So from last week we're going to go ahead and take our solution and take off the stopper and we're going to decant it. And the way we decant it is by taking a glass stirring bar or stirring rod and we'll go ahead and stick it into our re receiving uh, flask. And if you'll notice, this receiving flask has a little boiling chip in there. And then we'll transfer the liquid over. So typically you're gonna wanna hold it like this, but for the camera, I'm just gonna hold it like this so you can actually see it. And you're going to pour the liquid along the glass. And so what that does is it allows the liquid to travel along the glass and not spill on the outside. And that's how you decant. Now you can go ahead and add a little bit more solvent in to make sure you get any residuals uh, off the surface and then you can decant it over. Now once you do that, we'll go ahead and boil. Okay, so once we decant, we'll go ahead and put our Erlenmeyer flask on our hot plate and we're gonna lightly heat it to boil off the diethyl ether. So the diethyl ether is a very low boiling point solvent, so you only need about a one or two 
on your hot plate. And you're gonna wanna boil it for about 20 minutes or so uh, to get all the dieth diethyl ether off of, or out of your solution. From there, the residual liquid, you're going to go ahead and transfer it into a conical vial. Now, we'll just go ahead and use a pipette, transfer the liquid over into our conical vial, and you'll probably have uh, about two milliliters, maybe three milliliters of this. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and put that conical vial back into your hot plate. You're gonna attach a Hickman distill head. Go ahead and put that on top right there. And then you're gonna clamp those two together. So we'll go ahead and clamp them, give them the clamps. And then from there, we're gonna take a thermometer and we're going to insert that into the hole on the top of the Hickman distill head, and we're gonna clamp that as well. And the position you want your thermometer head to be, so that little bulb at the bottom of your thermometer, you want it right in the neckline, so right where the Hickman distill head gets skinny and right before it inserts into your conical vial. So right here, you can just make out that bulb. Now we're gonna heat this up and allow our product to escape into this little float right here. And as you heat it up, you'll notice that some liquid collects and then you can take a long pasture pipette. So this is a short one, but you can take one with a longer handle and just stick it in and collect from this moat on the inside. And you can transfer it over into a vial and from there, you have your product. All right, so from there, you're gonna go ahead and take your liquid product that's in your vial, take your refractive index, and if you don't remember how, just ask your instructor. And then you'll calculate out your percent yield and turn in your product in the vial, as well as your report to your instructor by the end of the second lab. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask your lecture instructor or your lab instructor, or send them an email or show up to office hours. Uh, for now, that is the end of the Grignard experiment, and we will see you next time.